Hey guys, how's it going? My name is Thamriel. Welcome to Final Fantasy XIV with Elliot Rose Petal, a lovely little monk. Not useless this time. Let's go ahead and have her do the Fist of Wind. There we go. I, I, I don't know. I just like the visuals for it. Anyway, we are currently going to be doing um, the job quest for our monk. We actually got myself to level 35 off camera for a bit. And uh, instead of doing the quest and just continue with the main quest, I know we just recently finished doing the event and everything. We're kind of breaking away from the story immediately already. But, you know, job quests are going to be pretty important. And unlocking new abilities is going to be very beneficial for us as we continue to grow as a monk. So I'd rather do the job quest before we do anything of the main quest. Uh, nevertheless, let's go ahead and begin here by starting the mission right here in the Goldsmith Guild with Eric. The quest is called Insulted Intelligence and we get experience and ability called Shoulder Tackle which rushes the target and delivers an attack with potency of 100 with additional effects a stun. Alright, sweet, we are finally gonna get a stun here, thank god, I'm actually exci very excited. Uh, just the people I was opening to see, it was a hair, hair breaths from setting out on my own. Now I was a hair's breaths from setting out on my own. Hmm, to look at you. Yes, I dare say you appear to have an aggro a grown and brawn the expense of brain. <laughs> wow, that's a way to roast this. Also, I don't remember what the guy's voice was like before. Um, so we're gonna go ahead and try to stick with his voice. We may just change up his voice every, every single time, who knows. Uh, right, well, uh, I'm just reading FC chat, making sure that I'm not being, you know, people are not asking me questions or something, because earlier they did. Uh, right, well, let us measure some aethers, shall we? And by we, I mean you. Oh, and the monk com uh, simpleton, of course. Though contrary to his nature, he has already set out to the destination assigned him. I uh, think perhaps that you are far too stupid to take, much less understand, aesthetic readings. Wow, that's... this guy's kind of a dick. <laughs> I mean, I understand he is smart, but no way to, like, berate us, uh, or no reason to. It is true, you are stupid. Wow, this guy really is a dick. I don't like him. He literally just straight up said that we are stupid. Thanks, Eric. You nerd. <laughs> oh, crap, I completely, I completely skipped what he was gonna say there. It's true, you are stupid, but the Aether Meter shall do all the work for you, and transmit the data back to me. A soul's more <coughs> suited to actions... The monk simpleton and yourself need only carry the device at your person and set about beating one thing as you always do. It shall capture data as you trudge and hither and yon. Aether is not the source of all magics, but also the fount of all life. Yet despite its ubiquity, it remains unperceptible. Uh, when a living thing dies, the aether comprises its life is released. When this discharge takes place, a portion of that aether remains, lingering in the physical world. No doubt you have blah 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 blah, etherical crystallizations, blah 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 blah, phys physical manifestations, apparitions of the deceased, blah blah blah, luminescent glow, blah 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 blah, known as the ethereal threshold. In short, the more violent and dramatic the loss of life, the greater the amount of aether left behind, either in an imperceptible form or in crystallizations, and whether there are more lives lost in manner, oh, and where are the most lives lost in this manner? Cemeteries? No false, you idiot. Battlefields. <laughs> Do you not see? With etheric readings of those locations, we can discern the scale of more of the battles that took place there. As for more fool's beliefs the monkhood keeps, chakra and spiritual energies and whatnot, if I were to allow that to truly exist, I would be inclined to say they are one and the same as ether itself. The ether churning around these ancient battles sets some to naturally settles in the surrounding life, both plant and animal, though more so in the latter. It accumulates within them, feeling, the, uh, feeling these beasts then releases that aether, uh, Felling. Oh, felling this beast then releases that aether, causing a surge that resonates with the aether within you, causing it to expand, the so-called opening of the chakra. But this, the very power of life itself within you grows. A watered-down explanation, but adequate for one of your mental prowess, I believe. My own wife never had the patience of such things either, nor my passion. Well, no wonder he's kind of a dick to everybody, <laughs> I would think. She cursed me at my work, took out children, and turned to I amigo. Oh, al amigo. Good! Seriously, nobody can stand this guy. I can't even stand just being around him. I just want to deck him in the face. <laughs> He's just insulting us over and over and over, just berating us for no reason. We're here to help him. Instead of saying, hey, you know, thanks for helping me out. He's like, oh, you simpleton, you stupid, you idiot. And like, what is this guy? This guy clearly has some issues. <laughs> uh, uh, but now is not the time for that tale. 
The, uh, the area I am placing you in charge is Bloodshore in Eastern Lanosea. Place this other meter in appropriate location after a spell, retrieve it and bring it to me. I obtain the data required. I obtained the data I require, and you and the monk simpleton are for afforded the chance to indulge your, how shall I put this, charming little backward fantasies. All are happy. This guy's really a dick. <laughs> Seriously. Just taking shots at the monk, taking shots at us, over and over, Jesus Christ. Ideally, I prefer you have a knowledgeable understanding of Bloodshore's history, but I feel we lack the time for me to educate you. I need hardly tell you that my research takes precedence over your schooling. <sighs> Alright, Eric. Alright, you see this? You see this, weapons? Do you know how many foes I've slain? I've slain Ifrit, I've slain Titan, and I will have no problem slaying some douchebag named Eric. <laughs> I don't care how smart you are. I don't care how smart you are. You hear that, Eric? You hear that? You hear that? After we're done with Ifrit, and, well, we, uh, we finished Titan, after we're done with Garuda, we're coming for you. We're coming for you, man. Yeah. Yeah, you don't want these claws, do you? You don't want these claws. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, let's go ahead and go through here. Uh, let's see, what we gotta go? Insulted Intelligence. Uh, let's see, we gotta go to Lanose, Eastern Lanose, and we have to go over here to set up the Aetherometer that he needs us to set up. Let's go ahead and do that. This guy clearly has some sort of problems. He probably was one of those kids that like was really, really smart, and everybody picked on him just because he was smart. He's like, I'll show them, Michael from school. <laughs> this is the lunchtime you'll call me nerd, take my lunch money. And now he just wants to, you know, as an ad as a full-grown adult, just insult everyone's intelligence simply for the sake of his own b benefits. I actually have no idea why he the hell he would want to do it anyway. Oh God, we come back to land. Oh, we come back here to this to the coast of the soul. I didn't even realize that until just now. You know what? I'll forget. I'll forget that berating uh, buffoon, <laughs> and I'll just enjoy the lovely shores of coast of the soul while I do this mission. This will be very nice and enjoyable because this place is just absolutely wonderful. Look at the stars and everything. Oh god, it's so pretty. Alright, let's go ahead now. Wait, why am I dismounting here? Go back mount up. Let's run over there, place the aether meter, defeat some things, and maybe it might work out best for us. Let's try this out here. Place the aether meter or aetherometer. Yeah, whatever. There we go, it's placed. Now we just gotta fight a couple things as that observes how the aether is released from creatures and beings. Gonna do this here. Shoot me too hard to defeat these guys together. We could probably actually cleave them together as well, like that. Won't really benefit us at the moment, but it will give or let us do just more damage in general, so it's gonna be kinda nice. There we go. Move on to the next one. Let's go and put up all the debuffs on them. And put up these debuffs as well. We're gonna have to fight a couple waves of creatures in order to figure out what's going on here. Hopefully we'll get to see the monk friend again, because I would like to see him again. We haven't seen him around in a while. Let's go take care of this, and a couple more hits and we're done. There we go. Any more? Of course there'd be more. <laughs> of course there'd be more. We should probably take on one than the other first. You know, just worry with one single ad and to worry about the other single ad. Just so it's easier for us to manage all the ads and everything. Go and do this, put up the dot in this guy. Nope, got back away from this. Back from behind. And Haymaker, just to make it easier. Reapply the dot. It's like literally, I'm just after. When it comes to me just fighting ads and stuff, I literally feel like I have to dance around, which is kind of neat. It's kind of neat of its own. That I can like dance around, do my own little routine here. <laughs> my own little pirouette, if you want. If you, um. If I can say that, I don't know. <laughs> Sorry, the battle is just distracting the hell out of me usually. Okay, the energy in the battlefield opens a chakra within you. We can use the atherometer to see what happens here. Retrieve the atherometer. Deliver the atherometer to Alec at the Goldsmith Guild. Is that it? Really? I'm pretty sure this would not be it. This was way too easy for us. Uh, if not, let's go ahead and just go ahead and teleport here. Then we'll use the um, uh, the giant atherite crystal to see if we can use the Atherite network, the Ether network, and uh, teleport just directly to the Goldsmith's Guild. Also like how the setup for the uh, for Ulda, the, the entire network, is set up, because compared to like, let's say, Heaven's Ward, uh, and the, let's see, what is it, the Foundation, and Ishgarden Foundation everything, a lot of these things are kind of marked down by the name of places, like the Forgotten Knight is the inn, 
uh, Skystream Manufact uh, Sky Manufactory, that's for the uh, for the Machinist Guild and stuff like that. Um, Athenium Astrologicum is for the uh, the Astrologian Guild. Let's see, what else is there? The Tribunal is for the Supreme tr Sacred Tribunal of Haliconic Industry. Industry. In in wow, what's going on with me today? Industry Doctrine. See, complicated ass names. And then I go over here and it's like, hey, look at this. Hey, Adventurers Guild. And then I'll go over to the next area and I'm like, oh, look at that. Gladiators Guild. Miners Guild. Goldsmith's Guild. It's easy. It's just set up to be just easy to travel around and everything. Let's go ahead and use the Aetherunder here and go over to the Goldsmith's Guild. The complicated names. I'm still not used to for the Heaven's Word expansion. Uh, hopefully, they don't add anything more to it because otherwise, I'm still not going to be able to remember. <laughs> I kind of already figured out how to run around the place, I just don't ever use the Atheron network there because all the titles just seem way too confusing for me. I'll, ev I'll eventually come around to learning them, <laughs> but not right now. Have you read this Atheron meter? Ah, uh, yes I have, you dumb, dumb, smart person. <laughs> hmm, it seems the device has suffered some damage. I suppose such things are unavoidable in this line of work. I must see to its repairs at once. That is, after all, why I put up here at the Goldsmith Guild. My atherometer is no ordinary device. I came up with elaborate design myself, had the finest engineers of Garland Ironworks draft the schematic, and then commissioned the most talented goldsmiths to fabricate it. And you will probably still insult the goldsmith, wouldn't it? Uh, Watergill delivered the results in his outing not long ago. No, the results of his outing not long ago. I must insist that you take your leave of me now. There's no, where, uh, there's no wealth of data for me to analyze, and I feel that simply having you nearby will somehow affect the processing power of my brain. Damn, this is like the most insulting kind of guy ever. This is like this is guy is made to test your patience at this point. Repairing the atherometer and defining which location to next investigate will require some time. Why don't you go and train those muscles of yours or whatever it is you do in my absence? That's that's it. Wow, that was a oh okay good. We get a cinematic here. At least we get some piece of content. Never mind, we don't get anything. We just get the ability. Never. That's it. We don't even get to do any monk trading. I thought we'd get to maybe see the monk guy and like train with him and stuff. Uh, next is gonna be for, I believe, level... Yeah, that's gonna be for level 40. And we can be able to learn Fists of Fire. Increase damage up by 5. Ooh, nice. That's kinda cool, actually. That's actually really, really cool. Let's see, what have we got here for the jobs and all the abilities? We're gonna get... Actually, let me go ahead and move this ability over to the G as my stun. Let's see, does this have, thing, have a range? It does, it has a level... Not level. Uh, 20 yard range. That's actually really good. That means we can like charge over to the opponent we're fighting and stun him from the start. Uh, what else are we, uh, we going to get? We're also going to get Steel Peak, which is going to be another stun. So looks like we're going to have two stuns. One, the two. This is more of like a rush towards the target. And this is going to be more of like an actual stun because it just has a three yard range. I could maybe do. No, I think we got to get extra ability there. Could do Shift F for this ability and then do R since it's more of a charge and then leave uh, Steel Peak for G. I don't know. It's I'm used to a certain type of um, key binding patterns for most of my MMOs where R slash uh, Shift R is usually my heal. R is some kind of a movement ability or extra DPS ability. F is usually something that has to do with my utilities or rotation. A Shift F is usually a complement towards F and G is usually a stun. I think I wanted to mention G. I don't know. Uh, but yeah, I, I have a weird pattern when it comes to my MMOs and my preference and how MMOs are laid out. Nevertheless, let's go ahead and go over to Thanalan. Let's go to Eastern Thanalan and uh, head over to the Church of St. Adama Landama. We actually got, I think, a couple of main quest missions we can start up there and continue on from there and uh, pretty much just hopefully try to work towards uh, freeing some of the science that we got. They're still captured uh, from last episode, so yeah, we're gonna have to figure out our next strategy to maybe freeing them or seeing if we can infiltrate the uh, the Garland Empire or something. We try to find a way to fight them, bring up forces, whatever. Anything we can possibly find out there. But there you go. And after that, in process, hopefully we will uh, run into some of the people I'm hoping we're gonna be running into pretty soon here. Not sure who just yet, but I, like I said, when I first played this, through this thing, I was kind of rushing really fast, and I really wanted to 
you know, get through the questing and everything. But now that I'm, you know, this far in, already taking time with questing, I kind of want to, you know, take it nice and easy, take it nice and slow, kind of enjoy the adventure. Let's talk to Marquet over here. Let's see, Marquet has a personal quest. Excuse me, Elliot, do you have a moment? It concerns his broken horoscope, which was found in the pocket of a man brought here for burial. There is something familiar about this. But just, oh, I probably should be moving my face a little bit closer to the mic if I'm going to be that low. <laughs> but just what, I cannot say. Perhaps if I tinker with the device, it will come to me. However, I lack the proper tools to do so. I would ask that you journey to Oda in my stead to obtain a ballpoint chisel and a pair of needle nose pincers. If you're willing to do this, please know that, as they are uncommon tools, you may need to visit the Goldsmith Guild and browse the market in order, in order to find them. Oh, well, I remember, I remember this quest, it took me an extra while to figure out how to do it, but you literally have to find an item that somebody crafted or somebody from the Goldsmith Guild that is able to provide you with the specific items. It doesn't actually lead you to them. Talk to also to uh, Edward, I think that's Edward. It's a weird way to spell that word. Uh, with little elbow grease. Let's see what this has here. Oh, just my luck. I scavenged this here all thinking I could use it to make myself hot meals, but it looks like to be in a bad way. Lots of dents, a few holes even. Hey, you're pretty well traveled, ain't you? Ever seen one of these before? Or better yet, know how to fix it? No? Ah. Wait, I know you, uh, who we ought to ask. Mind showing this over to Marquet for me? He prepared a clockwork toy I found once, or repaired a clockwork toy I found once, so maybe he can do something with it. Hmm. Show the broken oven to Marquet. Oh, I guess Marquet can fix things. Is it something I can do for you? Yeah, uh, a kid gave me a broken oven? This. This is an alchemist's emblem. Alembic. You said the boy wishes to use it for cooking? I suppose it would be possible. Were I, to, were I to make some modifications, but I would need a bronze ornated hammer to do so. Can you bring me one, Elliot? You need only go to Camp Drybone to find a merchant who sells tools. Oh, yeah, I can do that. Uh, Camp Drybone, that's actually the camp right outside of here. Right over here. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to go there later. For now, let's go back to Ulda and check the market and the goldsmith guild to see if you can find the items that are necessary for us we'll probably check the market see if we can find something for cheap nothing over 2000 3000 guild to be honest uh it shouldn't be costing us that much but uh, i guess we'll just have to wait and see uh, it, it, the market could be shifting at any point and i'm the last person to be keeping up with the market at all <laughs> hmm all right then, let's go ahead and head out. We we'll probably should check. Let's see, is there an Athrite to the market? We could run over there, but somehow we could use the Athrite. Nothing close to the place. Hmm. Let's check the Goldsmith Guild first before we go anywhere else. Maybe the merchant there might be able to help us out here. Goldsmith's Guild. There we go. And after that, we will uh, come back to uh, Camp Drybone and talk to somebody who sells tools. Get the hammer real quick, and then come back to him. So pretty much, start off with a longer journey, get over there, complete whatever we need, and then come back and grab the last little items that are required of us. There's Membedezu, he might be able to give us one of the items, we need a bullpoint chisel or a pair of needle nose pincers. Bullpoint chisel? Why yes, we happen to have a surplus of that particular tool. By all means, take one if you desire. An odd request if you don't mind me saying. It has a very limited number of applications. Hmm. Well, good thing we were able to get one. Uh, I think we can also get something from a guild supplier. Needle nose pincer. Hmm. Needle nose pincer. Might not be able to get it here. I think a crafting needs to be able to make something like that. No hammers here either. Copper ores and cord. No, that's not it. Nobody here, like the guild master, I don't think she would be able to help us with anything. Although she could maybe sell some stuff for us. No, she just the guild master. Never mind. Oh, that's a nice little crown here. <laughs> Look at that. It's actually kind of pretty looking. I like it. Alright, so I guess we could probably check the market for the needle nose pincers. I'm pretty sure somebody in the... Somebody, you should know, specializes in goldsmithing. Probably has one of those items already created and crafted for us. We can just search and scour the market for a little bit. I'll just go ahead and swing by there. Calamity Savager, uh, let me swing by you and see what I can get from you. We can get some rewards. I do have some golden feathers that I still need to retrieve from, um, from my, what is it called? From my retainer. Let me actually go do that first before we come back to the, the salvager. 
The Savages are apparently offer you some in-game stuff that you can get if you like do a promotional material or whatever, you know, get some promotional items or special event items. I think you can also purchase those if you have the proper resources needed. So yeah, let's go by through here. Swing by the market, see if they have here a needle nose pincer. Let's check here. Hmm. Needle nose pincer. Oh, is that where we go? Oh, I didn't even realize that we can go to this NPC. <laughs> I am was completely blind to it. I didn't realize we can get it from this guy here. Whoops. <laughs> well, anyway, let's see if we can go ahead and help him uh, purchase from him. Welcome, welcome. What might be discerning? My ward, you say needle nose pincers? He must be a skilled craftsman indeed. Please take this pair as a gift. By the by, do you have representation here in exchange? If not, I'll be most interested in discussing a partnership. Well, maybe a lot of, another time. I level 30, I could probably do something like that. This synthesis, break down item into one or more with some original materials. Oh, it's for crafting! I'm gonna have to come back and do that for sure. I actually want to make acro as well because I don't have that either. Dishonor before death, I'm probably not gonna do that for now. Maybe, maybe I could. A uh, little time left, you can find you in his burdens. I think this might be for a dungeon. Probably accept it real quick. Time heals all wounds, or say, oh, so say those who have never experienced true pain. More on thirsty summers we passed since I carried the standard of the Dark Light Raiders into Kato's Cry. But not a day goes by that I don't see the faces of friends I lost the faithful day. Gerbert the Red in his lower second, our best Stillwater. Simon the Sweet, always armed with a jab and jest. Our ever. Ir Ireful mage Kyra Zaran, as quick to cast as she as he was to temper. Thurman Thousand Gill. Never has there lived a man with a tighter grip, be it on his sword or his coin. And let's not forget one Elm Alison. Though it's hard to fathom now, but with all the adventurers scampering about like rabbits in the spring, there was once a time when bands of mercenaries were uh, who the city states turned to when a needle blade. The Dark Light Raiders, being the biggest and the best of them bands, his guardian funded foy uh, forays into hellish pits like the Orum Vale, would earn the king's ransom in a manner of days, though it would only take a night of devil's play and the moray to see it gone out of our purses. Oh, <laughs> damn, alright then. Uh, but so was the life of Raider. That is, until we took the job at Cutter's Cry. My brothers and I had stood against a herd of giant buffaloes of on Ogremoru Snor Snorble infestation of the Pearl, legions of cold-blooded Sahagen from the abyss depths of the Indigo Deep, Indigo Deep, but none, excuse me, but none of that prepared us for the horrors we would face in Hell's Boot Halls. None of it prepared us for the Chimera. The, ba the bard still sings of the day seven of the realm's finest warriors set off into the bowels of the forsaken place, but only saw one return. Sybil the Stoic, I guess that's him here. He looks a little bit stoic there. A little bit stoic and probably didn't sleep much. Uh, spare by the beast so that he may warn all the others who would be foolish enough to attempt to dispoil the chimera's lair. Ah, my apologies. My apo apologies, not apologies. My apologies. You did not come to hear the guilt riddled rambling of an old man. But if you have a moment, I was wondering if I could ask you for a favor. The final wish of an ailing soul was seeking peace with his past before departing on his journey through the seven gates. In each of the thirty summers since escaping from the maws of a terror beast, I returned to its lair to, pr uh, to pay the proper respect of the fallen compatriots. However, the years have. I'm gonna go ahead and skip through this. As a lot of dialogue, and I'm pretty sure it's very, very interesting, but I think it might be for a dungeon. Just sound before death. Either dungeon or somewhere else. Central Thailand, cut us cry. Oh, that's a dungeon. That's a dungeon I don't have, actually. That's the first time I ever see it. Well, I found something kind of cool. Hey guys, how's it going? My name is Sam Rio. Welcome to the Hello, what have we got here? Hello, ladies. How's it going? Breasts are the treasure of the I kind of want to say you could dress better. 